Hello, I'm going to just give you one a small story. So my um, father's family name is Myerskoff, and my mother's family name is Fraser. And I was brought up in London, and I always felt I was a Myerskoff. Um, Fraser, I feel sad because Fraser didn't really come into it very much. My mother was Scottish, her father died... Um, when she was quite young, we were close to her grandmother because my parents moved her down to this place in East Anglia, poor woman. She lived there on her own for ages. But, um, but the family that I was really part of and I lived next door were my, was my French grandmother and um, my, um, my great-grandfather. My great-great-grandmother gave birth to my great-grandfather in the um, workhouse in Farringdon and then she gave him away to the circus and then she got him back, and then they lived in this house for two houses along here for about a hun hundred years, not two hundred years. <laughs> and, and this is my great-grandfather, French grandfather, who was a salon painter. So this is what I bought, was brought up with. This was my dad. He was a classical mu musician, and so was my um, uncle. We all lived next door to him. And then, um, then my, my dad died um, in uh, 2006, and, but... Suddenly, my mum died in 2018, just before Christmas, 2017 into 18, just before Christmas. And, um, and it was quite a, big, um, uh, quite a big thing, losing both your parents. Um, and then in May, in March that year, I was rung up from um, this project in Aberdeen called Look Again Festival. Now, Aberde this was a really weird thing. Because my mum and dad <laughs> thought that the only way you can ever meet anybody in life was love at first sight. And if you did not fall in love with them straight away, then that was gonna, not ever going to turn into anything. Because that is the way they met and they told us that all the time. So my dad was on a ballet tour with the Royal Ballet and he went up to Aberdeen. And my mum had got stopped going out with... Um, this guy, and had moved to Gray's School of Art to teach embroidery. And my dad saw my mum at the top of the stairs and fell in love with her. And then he asked her down to London, and this is them dancing, Scottish dancing, and my uncle playing the violin. And, and then they managed, he, in three months, my dad managed to um, get my mum, get the judge, I don't know how it works in Scotland, but you had to do certain things, and then they got married. And then they came back down to London, and then, obviously, we were born. There's me, and this is me. I've always had little Westies. Um, and so it was a sort of a weird thing. I was asked to do a project. My mum had just died. I'd never been to Aberdeen. And this is where if my parents hadn't met in Aberdeen, I, would I wouldn't have existed. So I was, they asked me to do a work about this Merkit Cross, which was a place where you, meet, you used to meet. It was like a market place in in the, in the town, in, in Scottish towns, and people would come and meet there, and so it was a meeting place. And so they wanted me to look at this area to react, so I'm going a bit forward, to reactivate somewhere that was an important place, but now was really just drunks used to hang around there, and they wanted me to relook at that. But while I was um, discussing about this process, um, they also wanted me to work with a Doric poet, so Joe Gibbons. And a lot of my work is about working with communities. So when I go and do these projects, I never really think that I will necessarily put my narrative into a project. I tend to try and draw out the narrative from the groups of the people that I'm working with. And when I was talking with um, Joe, I probably will cry at some point in this talk, sorry. <laughs> when I was talking with Joe, I was talking about my parents' meeting, and she was going, well, we need to tell your story as well. So you, we need to tell your parents' story and the story of Aberdeen and the people of Aberdeen. So we did this joint narrative, which was really wonderful, where we did all these workshops and we made a jigsaw poet, poem. I think I've got these a bit in the wrong order, sorry. We made a jigsaw poem in Doric. Now, I'm not going to read Doric. Doric is a dialect for North East Scots. It's a North East Scots dialect. And I thought I wouldn't be able to read this, but I can actually understand all of it. And if you read it in your head and you sort of put a Scottish accent on, <laughs> you will be able to understand the words. So, 
we wrote this jigsaw poem. We did poet workshops about what um, the local people felt that Aberdeen, what it meant to them. And then we also, then actually Joe wrote this beautiful poem about the story of my mum and dad, which was about fabric and, and music all coming together. And, um, and then we painted the, we, we made the whole project together. We painted it. And what I realised, I was more Scottish than I thought I was. I thought I was really London. I don't think I'm particularly English because I never really, I was always a bit of an outsider. And then I realised that actually it's because I was quite Scottish. <laughs> and my mum had actually, infilt well, I knew she'd infiltrated me quite a lot. <laughs> but my mum had actually sort of, um, her Scottish mannerisms and everything and her strength, because all these women here were unbelievably brilliant. I mean, they were so amazing to work with. And it was a bit, sorry, it's too much. <laughs> it was a real realization that um, you think you know who you are, you think you're this certain person, but then actually you have to expose yourself to things because if this project had never come up, I don't think I'd ever gone to Aberdeen. My mum and dad were dead. It wasn't a place I was gonna go to. And so this actually brought this incredible um, sort of change in me. Um, and then when we did this poem, we... Sorry, am I talking too long? No, no, no. Oh, no, a few more minutes. Oh, <laughs> I'm all right. so, sorry. Oh. Mm. I just missed my mouth and I'm very nervous. Sorry. Um, so, um, and then anyway, but that poem, the long poem... Because I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll do all the type on the inside. So the idea is when you got to the Mercat Cross, I wanted to make this object that was, you could see from really far. But when you went in, you actually looked at the detail on the Mercat Cross as well. And you actually really did think about that monument that was there and all the layering that was going on. But I didn't actually realise they were going to give me such a big poem to write. So I had to, so I, <laughs> I ran out of time really because I just thought, I don't know how I'm going to write all this poem. I had to do all this other stuff. So then I thought, oh, I'll just do it as a performance. And so I just sat under the cross and then had to write it all out, which was quite difficult actually because it was all in Doric, which is not a language. So I had to keep on checking how to spell everything because otherwise I'd be in real trouble. Um, and, but it was really beautiful. I've never done this before. And then people would come up and they'd talk to me and they'd ask and we'd start discussing about their feelings about Aberdeen and, their, and how, you know, living there. And this is just some of it. And this is really, really extreme for me because I'm quite controlled. So to just do my handwriting is quite hard. Um, and, then, and then this was, so my mum's poem, my mum and dad's poem was lined the inside of the Mercat Cross. And then... I, I like putting lots of heights in things so you can look at a, at a monument in a way that you've never looked at it before. And then also, so then Joe, then we did this, we did lots of spoken word poetry as well in this place so people would come along and listen to it. Um, and this was the view down. And then this, this lady was amazing. She was um, a... a a midwife and she had she knew this festival look again festival was going on but she'd never been part of it and uh, never thought she could go into the galleries or anything and then when she came into um she saw this and came in and then we discussed things and how they wanted more art on the streets and how they wanted to be more involved even though they were you know they weren't involved in the arts and it started this amazing dialogue with lots of people i just thought this was Fantastic, because this was the team of women. We were super strong. And, um, and this is the outside, so you can <laughs> see the contrast. I mean, it was a wonderful place for me because of the grey stone in Aberdeen. This is, and everybody, and it was fantastic because everybody got involved. Mums, dads, grannies, and they'd all come up and they'd go, oh, I painted a bit of this and I painted a bit of that, which was really sweet. Um, and lots of people, I don't think they actually understood some of them what it was, but they quite liked it. And then you can see the contrast in the street. But one of the biggest things was, and this is why I'm going to cry again. <laughs> that this is my mum's work. So we had an exhibition of my mum's work because she had taught Grey's School of Art, and this is all connected to Grey's School of Art. And my sisters and I, we all came together, and we'd never have come, we'd never have gone to this um, 
we'd never have gone to Aberdeen, we'd never been together. And at that point, with this, with this connection with my mum, and it was just such an amazing thing. And this happened totally by chance. It was a random phone call. So there you are, and apologies for crying. <laughs> Thank you, Murak. That really <laughs> came. That came from heart, and we could we could sense every emotional chord. And I'm sure you touched many emotional chords here. And how beautifully uh, your your narratives uh, are emoted around words and color, mm -hmm. and both play a very important role in what you create. Um, you are, from sure, for the entire world is love at first sight. <laughs> Uh, I'll leave uh, anybody to time. ask any question. I didn't come <laughs> <laughs> I really want to ask, have you ever fallen in love at first sight? But that's an impertinent question. <laughs> um, um, I, I love the emotion with which you tell your stories. Um, do you think, though, a story so personal... Do you ever have issues about sharing something so personal with everyone? Because that, that often creative processes are about revealing parts of oneself, but sometimes uh, people are not always aware that how personal a work of art may be. But that is utterly, you've just opened yourself and given everything, and, <laughs> and that's wonderful. Um, but that's why I wanted to really show that piece, because um, I didn't go up to Aberdeen thinking that really the narrative was going to be about me. It was going to be about the community, about their feeling about Aberdeen, you know. And then, and actually it was Joe, the poet, who said, come on, why, you, you know. And I was a bit like, well, we've, in this context, you know, sometimes I'll do work and it's just about m my personal thought process. But this was, this was a community thing. But actually I thought it made it stronger in the end that we both had this... Um, you know, it, it was a double narrative, and um, and also, it really, you know, I, it drew out something in me as I showed that I didn't really wasn't expecting, and that's what I love about these commissions in the street. You don't know what you're going to do, you know, and then suddenly this thing comes from it, which was I had no idea I was going to do, and I certainly didn't think I'd do it. You know, start thinking about it three months after my mum died. You know, I didn't think I'd do that. So you know. So I just thank, I'm really grateful that people give me those opportunities. Um, and it's, if, it, if, uh, if it comes out like that, then I, I'm really grateful for it as well. I love the fact you wear your art on your sleeve as well. You've got love uh, <laughs> blazoned across uh, your, your front. Okay, finally then, have you fallen in love? I did, love at find, first sight? I did find love. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and, and it might have been... I didn't think it was love at first sight because I was a bit older then and I was just given up on that type of thing. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's been, we've been together 20 years, so we're good. 